Okay, first grade, we are going to do one last one if you had time, and this one is going to be the more challenging one. This is going to be the harder version. Before we start drawing, please write your first name, as much of your last name as you can, and your class code. If you are in Mrs. Gross' class, you are 1G. If you are in Mrs. Collier's class, you will be 1C. And if you are in Mrs. Hurden's class, you will be 1H. For our hard one, we are going to do something a little bit more challenging with our horizon line, our line that separates our sky from our ground. Instead of doing a straight line or a curved line, this time we're going to do one hill, two hills. Again, for some of you that are very good at drawing, I know that this is still pretty simple for you, but I promise once you start decorating it with yarn, As a reminder for this project, we are drawing these special trees by the artist we'll be learning about and these special buildings that he drew so that we can start learning how to make art differently than what we're used to. Because this is going to be the hard one, you are going to use four. You can do four trees, four buildings, two trees, two buildings, three trees, one building, or three buildings and one tree as long as you only have four going all the way across. Now that you have your idea drawn down with what kind of horizon line you want, what kind of buildings and trees you want, now we're going to focus on making it better by using the grid on the bottom. To start off, we want to make sure that our horizon line is not too high, and we want to make sure that it is not too low so that we don't have too much sky or too much land. So we'll be using our horizontal line that splits our landscape in half. And I'm going to draw my double hill and I'll put one on the left and I'll do one on the right where the top of my hill will touch the line on the left and on the right. Now that we've made our horizon line better, allowing for more space to draw buildings and trees, now we can focus on how many things we want on each side by using our vertical grid line so that we can have the same amount of things on the left and the same amount of things on the right. In this one, I have four trees but nothing on the right, so I would want to move some of these over. On this one, I have two on the left and two on the right, which is great balance, but I still have a big empty space in the middle. So last project, we focused on drawing big when we were drawing our monsters, and we want to focus on that for this drawing, but we're also focusing on where are those things going to go so that people like to look at my pictures longer. I drew a house on the left. I'm going to draw a house on the left on the bottom, but this time I'm going to make it bigger. I have a tree next, and because I'm going to draw four things, I'm going to want two on the left and two on the right. 
So I know I'm only putting one more thing on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my tree large. The next thing I'm gonna draw is another building on the right hand side. And I'm going to finish it off with a big tree all the way on the right. So now my picture is more balanced and it's bigger filling up more of the picture. It'll be more fun for people to look at and it's gonna be easier to decorate.